Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and others. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. I don't know how you came, came across it, but you're here now, and I, I hope you'll stay till the end, all right? So in this particular video, I'm going to be talking about architectural space programming, uh, specifically compu computation tables, all right? <laughs> so computation tables are what we use to uh, determine how much square area we will need for a particular space, room, or area, okay? Um, for this example, so just so you know, I usually work on work with square meters, so I'm going to be using square meters in this, but if you use square feet or if you use a different type of uh, measurement that I've never heard of, probably like banana, uh, then you can use that as well. You just have to uh, make it adjust to your preference. But so I'm going to be using square meters. Uh, for my uh, computation table. You'll see here that I have, uh, this is for a proposed two-story home, okay? And I have four main columns here. So one, I have the type of room, two is for users, three is for items, and four is for uh, allowances and totals. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> So how does this work exactly? Well, let's go through it one by one. So we'll so I'll be able to explain it better. So for the type of room, this is where we indicate uh, what exactly is the space that we need to work with. Uh, in this example, for the space, we're gonna just put here kitchen. So kitchen kitchen is very simple to work with. Uh, we're gonna just have a very basic kitchen. We're not gonna put like a center island or anything. We'll have only the bare, well, not the bare, bare necessities, but we'll have this necessi necessities and then some. So for this proposed two-story home, uh, it will only have one kitchen. So there will be no dirty kitchen, no ancillary kitchen, no maid's kitchen, no other special kitchens. It's just one kitchen for the whole family to use, all right? Uh, the activities that are uh, under the activity column, we put here what's going to be done in the kitchen. So we can list down everything that a person does in the kitchen, especially like if you have a client that you're very close to and you know everything, like... You know everything you do you do with them uh or you've done everything with them and you've been in the kitchen with them and you know everything they're going to do you can list it all down here on the activities but uh just for the sake of you know you know this uh, example we're just going to put the primary thing that's done in the kitchen and that's cooking okay so now that we have determined what we need to uh, figure out the space for and what they're going to be doing in it. We're going to determine how many users can go into this area at one time. Now, just so you know, this uh, computation table is not, you know, it's just kind of like any other uh, space programming that we make uh, for specific projects. It's not really always going to be followed. Like uh, in this situation, I would say that we'll always have, uh, at most of the time, we'll always have two persons in the kitchen uh, at all time. But there's a possibility that maybe the whole family will be there and they'll all be making like a cake or something or uh, everybody is going to be there like uh, just, you know, making gossip or whatever. Uh, but for this family, we're just going to say that for the most part, two people will always be in there. Uh, I'll go into further detail regarding the uh, situation if like there's going to be more people going into the kitchen, but yeah, so we'll stick to two. Um, uh, for, the, for the users, we have different type of users. So we have here uh, three types here, static, pedal, and pivotal. Uh, and these, these uh, types of users are the kind, uh, they determine how much movement the user will be doing inside of the area. When we say static, uh, they basically don't move at all. So they're just kind of like in one spot the most of the time. They like so they go into the room, they find a seat, they sit there. Uh, after whatever activity is being done, uh, they get up and just go somewhere else. That is a static person. Uh, usually we can say that a static um the amount the square area in the square area in meters that a static person will need is somewhere between 
point four to point eight. Okay. Uh, in my personal uh, personal setup here, I have it at 0.6. So you can use that if you'd like. But like I said, uh, depending on the kind of architect you are, uh, I would say that as long as you stay between the range of 0.4 meters and 0.8 square meters, 0.4 square meters and 0.8 square meters, you're in the safe range. So in mine, I have 0.6. For pedal movement users, uh, these are the kind of users like, so for example, um, in this scenario, we have the kitchen. In the kitchen, you don't really sit in one spot. You're actually moving most of the time. So you get something from the fridge, you move it to the countertop, you wash the vegetables, you move it to the countertop, you prepare, you, uh, prepare all these different things. You're kind of moving, but you're not moving to, uh, you're not moving extensively. You're just constantly uh or not constantly you're always moving but not to a degree where you're being pivotal which is in the case of pivotal you're actually just moving all the time like this can be uh better used for, for like example a uh, if you have a pool table in your house uh most likely you're going to use the pivotal um you're going to be a pivotal user because you're going to be moving around the pool table you're going to be getting out of the way you're going to be going to the 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 bar, the your, I forgot what they call it. Your your, your own bar, <laughs> your mini bar. There we go. It slipped my mind. Uh, you're gonna go back to the table. You're gonna keep moving. So that's more for pivotal. So I hope that uh, describes each of these different kinds of users. So like I said, in this kit situation, we're gonna have them both in the pedal area. So they're both kind of moving. They're both kind of you know in a particular area, just moving. Uh, the reason I say two, uh, and like I said, uh, don't get stuck to what you have put here. There's a possibility that more people will come into the kitchen to like, you know, if they're gonna talk to uh, the family, it's gonna do like a, a family activity or group is gonna come by and um, they're gonna just talk about stuff. But we'll get into that later. For now, We'll stick to that. Two people. Um, for the static, as I said earlier, four to four to eight square meters. Point four to point eight square meters for pedal. My setup is at one square meter, but uh, you can go somewhere between anywhere between point eight to one point five square meters. So and uh, pivotal is somewhere between 1.5 to 3 meters. 3 meters is a bit extreme, but it depends on how extreme the activity is inside the in the building. Uh, my pivotal setup is at 2.7 square meters. So the total area is then added up here in this column. So like I said, on my pet on my pedal I have 1 square meter, so that means 1 square meter for each for each person. So that's 2 square meters. <clears throat> When we move into the items, and the items are the furniture, fixtures, and equipment that we're going to put into this area. Uh, as we all know, uh, the kitchen has a, a very uh, specific set of things that, uh, sp specific set of like electronics and stuff that we always see inside of a kitchen. And uh, uh, the most uh, necessary, or the most uh, common item that you'll definitely find it is in a kitchen is a sink. Every kitchen must have a sink. Without a sink, I don't know how you can call it a kitchen because that is like one of the main uh, things you'll definitely find in a kitchen. <laughs> I don't know how many ways I can describe that. But anyways, uh, in the kitchen, this uh, here on this column, we're going to write how many of those we need. So we only need one. So in like the sense, if you have like a restaurant, you'll probably put like four sinks in your kitchen. But since this is just a standard home kitchen, we'll have one. Uh, the dimension of the equipment is put here. So uh, oh, so we'll put here uh, mo the smallest sinks that I know of are around 0.3 by 0.3 meters. But uh, in this case, we're going to go with a very sensible, sensible kitchen sink because I'm not sadistic. So uh, the dimensions we put here is just the width and the length, not the height. So the depth and the width. So depth and the width. Um, 
we can have 0.45 deep and 0.6 wide. That's uh, that's a good size kitchen if you or kitchen sink if you ask me. So that will compute here as 0.27 square meters. Uh, aside from the sink, I would say that we'd need some countertops. So let's put here countertops. And in my mind, we'll just have like a countertop on each side of the sink. So that means we'll have two countertops. And that will, a countertop, I would say is around 0.4 by 0.6. 0.4 wide and 0.6 deep. Um, you don't have to worry if you don't like know the the specific measurements of items. Like uh, I've been practicing architecture for a long time, <laughs> so it's not as long as most people, but it's long enough for me. Like I remember there would be weeks where I didn't get anything but one hour of sleep. So that's how like. Uh, uh, and you'll also meet architects that don't really care about measuring things because uh, you can actually buy catalogs and stuff like that which will tell you the measurement of items so if you have a specific set like you can be more specific here you can be like Grohe sink or HCG sink stuff like that uh, countertops you can put here like marble and then the, the brand and then you can base the measurement from the catalogs. But in this case, it's just the measurements that I know to be uh, correct in my mind. Um, next, we'll have a refrigerator. We're kind of doing this based on what I feel is the most important item, which is, you know, always remember that uh, uh, a client doesn't always know what they want. Even though they think they know what they want, they don't always know. And an architect usually does know what they want. Uh, we come to the, we have to make it a point that we always try to look out for the interest of the client. Um, it's okay at, for if you're a client. It's okay if you don't really know what you what you want. You don't, but don't try to force something just because you saw it somewhere else. Because that, just because it worked there doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Uh, the, make sure that your your architect is able to help you like do some soul searching. <laughs> so anyway, refrigerator, we only need one refrigerator. We're going to have a decent size uh, ref, so we'll probably have it at like 0.55 deep and 0.6 wide. That's a very decent ref, if you ask me. Uh, next, we'll have a range, uh, oven range. Other people use, uh, or what's becoming popular nowadays are induction cookers and stuff like that, uh, which is also fine. Uh, you just have to make sure that you always know the, the dimension. So you can always like check the catalogs or the brochures. That way you know what to put here. Uh, for the range, we only need one again. And we're going to have a decent size range, so 0 0.6 by 0 0.6. OK, so now we have uh, listed here all of the basic things that we're going to need for this kitchen. OK, uh, next we're going to move to the allowances. Oh, why is this not correct? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a bit OC, which I would think is good good if you're an architect. But anyway, so this is where uh, we take into consideration the like like I was mentioning earlier, not there won't. It's not like only two people will always use the kitchen, which is why we have this uh, allowance, which means that we already have a certain amount of space in a room, but we also provide uh, an additional percentage of that space in the scenario that we know this is the kind of uh, when we like learn as an architect when we learn to inter when we interact with the client we learn that this is how their family is this is how they are so we're able to like make a statement like i think i'm pretty sure that they're going to need this much more extra space because their kids are always running around or something like that um but before that there's one thing i have to do which is kind of <laughs> sad i'm not really like i said i'm not really an expert in um, excel so i actually manually merge these that way it looks cleaner this total area i actually put in manually uh, and this is actually equal to the sum of 
um, everything here, okay, and the, this one right here, okay. And we also have to take into consideration the count because if you have like two kitchens, then it will times it by two. So in this instance, it will only be times by one, which is fine. Um, I'm sorry, sorry, wait. Uh, that's the sum of those items. Total area per room. Yeah, okay, sorry, sorry. Total area per room. We only need the sum of these two. The total area here and the total area here. So the total area of the users and the total area of the items. <coughs> so that comes out to 3.44 square meters. Uh, we'll take into consideration this one here in the end. Uh, in the end here, we're going to times this with this, okay? And we're also going to times it with this here. Okay, there we go. So there's something off screen. Uh, I'll explain it in a bit. But anyways, so we, now we have this uh, allowance here. So like I said, there's a bit of movement going on here. We have the basic necessities for this kitchen, which is 3.44 square meters. Uh, which is definitely enough for two people to move around and for all of our equipment, all right? But we want what we want to happen is we want to give them more breathing room and more space for the family and more space for friends to come by. So this is uh, what we have here is the 100% total area, 3.44 square meters. And I feel that probably they're going to need uh maybe another 50 percent more okay there so what happened here is uh we add an additional 50 percent of the total square area here and that becomes our overall square square area which is 5.16 so 50 percent of 3.44 is 2.22 so 2.22 plus 3.44 is 5.16 so this makes our kitchen a much more nicer area to move around in. Uh, like the dimensions we can work with for this is 1.5 by 3.5, somewhere around there, which is uh, adequate enough. Or maybe somewhere around 2 by 2.5, also still adequate enough. Uh, if you imagine, the more things that we add to the kitchen, the more spacious it becomes. So for example, if we want to make it that the kitchen always has people in it, like we want to make six people. So here we can add, uh, we'll add another four, so we'll make that six, okay? Uh, and then the extra four people will be sitting on, the count on a counter island somewhere. So we're gonna add four here in static. So like I said, the static person basically comes into the room and they find a place where they can just, you know, sit down and they're not really contributing any sort of activity other than either watching or talking or whatever. So let's say we have uh, this family likes having people come over so that they can watch them cook because they're, they're a family of chefs. Like, let's say it's like that. So in this instance now, we're going to add a countertop island countertop island okay and we're going to have one of those and that will be roughly around uh let's say 0.7 by 0.9 okay and we'll also have chairs uh high chairs We'll have four of those. That's for the four people, four additional people. And these aren't going to be big chairs. We'll just make them 0.4 by 0.4. They're just like the, they're the kind of chairs that are not really comfortable, but comfortable, comfortable enough for you to sit on for at least an hour. So now we have all of these new things going on. Uh, so now I have to merge these again. So as I did earlier, this is the one that we have to manually uh, compute. So this one is equal to the sum okay, of these items and this space, right? There. We'll set this back to zero just so you can see. So now our square, uh, square footage or square meters becomes, square meter area becomes seven 
0.11. So that's somewhere between 3.2 or 3 by 2. 3 by 2.5. 3 meters by 2.5 meters. Uh, that means that we can just fit everything exactly. But like I said, we, we still want to add more to it. We want like we want to still have that more comfort comfort while we move around in this area. So once again, uh, let's say that they got a bigger budget. Let's say this time they want 80% extra space. Like that's the kind of family they seem like. They seem like they really want to have it. They really want people to you know feel invited in their kitchen. So if we add uh, another 80% square footage or square, why do I keep saying square footage? Uh, square meters. Our total becomes 12.8 square meters, so that's around 3 by 4, 3 by 4 meters. So there, I hope this kind of makes sense to you guys. I know I'm kind of brush rushing through it, and I know there's a bit, few points where I'm a bit confusing, but if you ever have questions, you can always just ask them down in the comments down below. Uh, so that's just for the kitchen. Um, as we go further down the list of uh, areas in the house, like we also have the living area, or Let's start with the dining area, actually, since it's more connected to the kitchen. So for the dining area, we only need one again. Uh, for the dining area, what do we do? We just dine. Or we dine, dining, eating. Uh, and uh, this is a family of four. But let's say they want a table for six. Uh, once again, we know that all six of them are just going to be eating or dining. So let's just say that we'll have five of that but then we're gonna have one person because let's say one person uh, is always getting up to get something so we can put one person in the pedal the pedal okay so that's uh and then we just keep going further down the down the uh list of areas that we have to work with so for this we'll have a dining table sorry a dining table We'll have one of those that will be about 0.9 by 1.5, 1.8, 1 let's say, much safe, much more correct. And then we'll have six chairs, six, uh, sorry, chairs, dining chairs, six, and that will be around 4, 4, 0.45 by 0.45, a much more comfortable chair. Uh, let's make it 0.5 by 0.5. A much much more comfortable chair okay and those are the, going to be the only items we'll have in the dining area so here we'll merge again so uh, without additional allowance we just have 5.62 which is equivalent to about uh, 2 by 2 by 2.6, 2 by 2.7, actually 2 by 2.8, no, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so that means what happens is um, we have our table, the dining table is 0 0.9 by 1.8, right? So since it's 2 meters, uh, we have the 0.9 for, at center uh, of the two, of the, <laughs> the table is centered between the walls at, uh, uh, 0.9, right? So that means at each side we have 0. Uh, 0.55 space for the chairs, which is right here. You can see correct, right? <laughs> and then the length, like I said, is around 2.8. The length of uh, if the length of our uh, room is 2.8, and we have 1.8, that leaves us with another one meter, correct? So the one meter is another 0.5 for a chair on one end and 0.5 for a chair on the other end. I'm not sure if you're, you can imagine it as well as I'm explaining it, but I hope you can. If, uh, if you can't, then I'm really sorry. I'll try better next time, I promise. But as you can see, that's a very tight space. Like There is no more space for mo much movement. And the reason for that is because everybody here is in the static position. The only extra 0.5 that, or 0 0.05 that was allowed on both sides is because of this here in the, p the pedal area. So what we can do to uh, fix that is either we can add more in the circulation multiplier or the allowance. We can say we can add another 80% uh, 
which will allow for a better movement for the comp uh, the group. Um, I'm sorry, this is incorrect. This is equal to this one, there, 10.12. So 10.12 is around 2 by 2.5 by 4, right? Uh, that's uh, a lot more space than earlier. So definitely people, you can see that people are able to move better in that kind of area. Uh, or if the family is very, if you know the family to be very, you know, they they move a lot. You can just put everybody here in the, you can put everybody here in the pedal area. So our area becomes 7.62 and then maybe you can add another 20 percentage or 40 percent there so we have like the same square meters area but in this scenario we're just going to assume that most of the people in this family most of the family members are not going to move that much there's just going to be five one person moving and since we're going to be since they have the budget for it we'll give them an 80 percent allowance all right so i hope you kind of are able to f see how this works uh it's uh the reason we do this is because we we want to better uh explain to as a as an architect we want to better explain in a mathematical way why certain things will fit in certain areas or how we've com computed it to fit in that way uh because like uh, when they look at drawings, it's just a 2D representation. When they see a floor plan, they don't they don't uh, imagine it the same way as we've imagined it when we designed it, as an architect imagines it when they design it. And we just do our best to explain it. But when we are also able to see show them like the how we came up with the idea of like this is how much space you need there, uh, then their their uh, clients are able to appreciate more. Uh, appreciate appreciate it more especially in like terms of business um, a lot of times which I find sad but a lot of times in like the, a country like the Philippines uh, like I said this is a multiplier this is an allowance this is a given allowance to make the space more you know more accommodating but a lot of times here in the Philippines there's no allowance <laughs> so if you can imagine, the only way you'll be able to move in this area is if the chair is tucked into the table already. And the, I, f I feel that's pretty sad, but a lot of business people would prefer that because uh, it means less space or less space to pay for. They don't have to pay for all that slab and all of that tiling and all that, you know, all of that stuff. But as much as possible, if you're an architect, I encourage you to always, always, always apply an allowance to all the spaces you design. Because we are not, you know, what, the reason we don't usually work with numbers is because, um, in all honesty, and this is not to say anything mean about engineers, but this is like an engineering thing. Engineers work with numbers because they are always... Their goal is to be as precise as possible. Architects are not meant to be precise because, uh, in our in this is at least how I perceive architecture. In our sense of doing work and uh, the way we approach an, a project is we think about how people will use it. Okay, but people are not always you know black and white. There's always that gray area. And that's why we have to insist in these like tiny things that a lot of people take for granted. Like, like I was saying earlier, uh, most of the time clients don't know what they want until the situation occurs. Architects always know what they want, or not always, but most of the time they do know what they want. And sometimes it's best for an architect to say like, uh, Sir, this is the minimum, sir or madam, this is the minimum amount of space that you're going to need for an area. But I would have to advise you to add an allowance because I'm telling you right now, nobody will enjoy being in that room. Every time they go in that room, they're going to always question, why is it like this? Uh, and the best that I can hope for as an architect is that the client will listen. If they don't listen to me, at the end of the day, it's up to the client 
Uh, and usually, it's in my sense, it's up to me in a sense that I can either accept the project or not. And what I usually do, uh, I don't accept the project because it's part of it's part of my ethics. You know, uh, it's part of my ethics that I'm designing something uh, specifically made to cater to your needs. And I wouldn't give you advice about anything if I I wouldn't open my mouth about anything unless I know for a fact that this is not a good idea. So usually, if a client would rather just say no, I want the minimal, the uh, I want the least amount of space possible. I don't want to spend anything else. Uh, I don't care if people don't feel comfortable in this room. Then I take the initiative and walk away. And a lot of people would think that's just me being too prideful, but it's not. It's just me being ethical, you know. I'm not a sadistic person. I don't want to put anybody through that. Uh, uh, architects that do that, like, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't want to say anything about it, but that's just me. Um, it always depends on the situation, okay? So anyways, uh, I hope you understood all of that. It's uh, like I said, numbers are more for engineers. That's why they're great at it. That's why I'd, that's why I personally, I'd rather get an engineer to do my computations for my building loads than do it myself. And plus, that's how it should be because at, I'm not, I don't, I don't agree with taking away jobs from other people. Uh, so yeah, uh, I hope. Uh, this answered any questions you might have or any concerns or any curiosities that you have when you see uh, how spaces are computed. Uh, if you feel I did anything wrong, please don't feel or please don't feel ashamed to comment down below and tell me how wrong I was. Or uh, if you have any other questions, comment down below. Uh, but anyway, with that said, um, Take care, everybody. I hope we can always better ourselves, and bye-bye.